consistently finding what we call the glove sweet spot. All right, and all we're, all we're trying to do here is just develop really good pocket awareness. And we're trying to do that by defining in really simple but really specific terms the part of our hand and the part of our glove that we um, see as being the place that just makes us quickest, cleanest, and most consistent. Um, and the more video we've watched, the more we've slowed it down, and the more dialogue we've had with our infielders, we've been able to identify the index finger. And if we really want to get specific, the tip of that index finger is the place that we want to square up every single ball. A lot of parallels can be drawn to the barrel of the hitter's bat in the same way that hitting coaches want to develop hitters who have a knack at consistently finding that barrel with every swing that they take. Well, we as infield coaches want to develop infielders who have a knack at consistently finding that good part of their glove. We also want to be comfortable throwing from a wide range of arm slots. Pretty common theme, I'd say, amongst most infield coaches. We just take a little different tact in, in how we teach it to our guys. We spend a little less time talking about the arm itself and a little more time talking about the role that posture um, plays and the impact that it has on the arm. So what I mean by that is, if I throw with really tall, upright posture, I'm naturally going to rotate and pass through a much higher window and use a higher slot than when I throw with a little bit more upper body tilt. When I do that, I'm naturally going to use a lower slot. So the question then becomes, all right, well, what role does, in, uh, does uh, posture play in infield play? And the answer to that is, every ground ball that I get in the infield, it's going to have a certain you know, route that I take. And depending on the distance to that route, um, it's going to create a certain amount of momentum that's either taking me towards my target or away from it. And if that momentum's taking me away from my target, I've got to find a way to break it, or at least offset it. And my posture is a way, amongst some others, of helping me do that and throw with just a little bit more bounce. Um, so what my goal is as an infield coach is to essentially create a practice environment that demands and taps into that full spectrum of posture. Well, the next important thing when you're looking at data is understanding why those errors are occurring and the different reasons. I liken it to a race. If I'm a race car driver and I lose a race, there's a variety of different reasons that I can lose the race. But the two primary reasons to me is that my car's not handling right or the driver's not experienced to the track. Just like an infielder, if the car's not handling right, that means his current move is ineffective and inefficient. He needs to go back to the garage. You need to break it down, add a drill, add a cue, add film, and make that change. However, if his current move is actually effective and he's just inexperienced to the track, that's a really good time to just get back out there and make practice more like the game. Make it as close to the racetrack as possible. I'll have two sections later, one about the garage, one about making practice more like the track.